For over 25 years, SanDisk has been redefining the possibilities of storage. That's why enterprise and hyperscale data centers, as well as leading manufacturers of smartphones, tablets, and PCs, rely on SanDisk. To them, we're peace of mind. Welcome to the Engineering Update. I'm digital editor Jason Lumberg, and in this week's episode, cell phone use aboard airplanes, clothing that thwarts government surveillance, and a bendable phone that fits like a shirt sleeve. If you've been on a plane in, oh, say the last 20 years, you've probably heard a pre-flight briefing that goes something like this. And that seatbelt needs to be low and tight across your hips, just like the hot pink Speedo I'm going to be wearing when I finally get the three of us to a hotel hot tub tonight. Okay, so it's usually a bit more like this. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just closed the boarding doors. Please turn off and still all portable electronic devices. And you all know what happens next. Everyone puts their cell phones in airplane mode or ignores the instructions altogether. And to date, a portable electronic device has never brought down a plane, though airlines insist that electronics emitting any kind of signal can interfere with the plane's own connection with the tower and in-flight sensors, including instruments for landing and navigation equipment. Though this does raise a few questions, such as... How come the plane doesn't interfere with my phone? And why don't the other phones interfere with my phone? I just always leave my phone on and nothing happens. Yeah. No, that is so you can't! Just a Everybody, no! All electronic devices have to be turned off. But the idea of airplane mode might soon become obsolete thanks to new directives from the European Aviation Safety Agency that allow portable electronic devices to remain on and connected through most stages of flight. Now this doesn't mean every airline will instantly allow cell phones in flight, and it doesn't mean the US will adopt these same rules, and it certainly doesn't mean you get much of a signal anyway. The safety agency's directives leave it up to each individual airline to decide whether or not to allow portable electronic devices in flight, but once the directives take hold and people see the planes aren't randomly dropping from the sky, this will probably become the norm for air travel. If you're really worried about the government or other agencies hacking your cell phone, feel free to go ahead and take off that tinfoil hat, because now you can buy clothing that ensures nobody has access to your phone or your credit cards. Appropriately named the 1984 collection by a London-based label called The Affair, it includes a line of clothing, but it also offers a $30 stealth technology insert that fits in the pockets of this particular line. Called the Unpocket, in homage to the protagonist of George Orwell's 1984, the pouch is made from material that blocks Wi-Fi at 2.4 GHz, GPS at 1 to 2 GHz, cell phone frequencies at 700 MHz to 2.4 GHz, and RFID at 13.56 MHz. It basically makes your iPhone untraceable as long as it's in the pocket. In case you were wondering, it's large enough to fit the new iPhone 6 Plus at 4.25 by 6.75 inches. You can also add your passport and credit cards into the pouch, which offers a police-grade high-performance shielding. The line is, quote, built for post-Snowden reality, unquote, and will allow you to become invisible to Big Brother. It may seem a little paranoid, but it's actually not a new idea. This particular line is being funded by a Kickstarter campaign that has already raised nearly $60,000. The line itself fits the theme with a very utilitarian feel to it, if that's your kind of thing, and the company is hoping it hits the streets in 2015. There's been a lot of discussion in the news recently about bending phones. Well, a startup company in the San Francisco Bay Area shows us that bending phones isn't always a bad thing. The company, Arubix, has designed a flexible screen phablet that they call Portal that slides into a dual strap arm cradle that extends about halfway up the forearm from the wrist. It seems brilliant. With the repetitive phones in the market, the portal seems like it's right on time. We've seen flexible displays like this for years now, mostly as demonstration models at CES that never make it to the market. But this is the first realistic design that's built entirely around the flexibility of the screen. This futuristic kind of display may seem hard to fathom for some, but the specs for this new phone are way too impressive to ignore. A Rubik's claims its 6-inch TFT display is also scratch-resistant and reinforced by a flexible Kevlar exterior. It has 2 gigabytes RAM, a total of 4 cameras, 64 gigabytes of storage, a full suite of sensors, NFC, Bluetooth, LTE, wireless charging, and a 3200 milliamp flexible battery. The processor is yet to be determined. Portal will run a skin version of Android and respond to touch, gesture, and motion-based commands. If you're brave enough to strap one of these on your sleeve, you can claim a Portal via an Indiegogo campaign right now, starting at $349.
and be on the lookout for a smaller 4-inch model coming around early 2016. That's all for this week's episode. Be sure to check in on Twitter and Facebook and catch past episodes on ECNMag.com. For the ECN channel, I'm Jason Lumberg, and thanks for watching.